Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 because that's where I keep my planes. And uh, we have the Rutan Boomerang again. I previously made a video about this plane expressing my frustrations and uh, the comments were mostly correct that it is a center of mass issue, not the center of mass issue in that um, I had placed the center of mass wrong. It was a center of mass issue that it's lying to me about where the center of mass is. It's not here, basically. The center of lift seems to be in the right location. I mean, it's not where I would put it. I would put it a little bit further forward, but um, it's okay for now. I might have to make some adjustments. Uh, in particular, it, it's possible to conceive that the airfoils, their center of uh, lift is actually a little bit further forward from their center, their origin point. And so the, I'll have to figure on that. But anyway, the point is that the real center of mass is actually right around here. And you can tell that because I've placed the landing gear appropriately and this plane would flop on its tail if uh, the center of mass is really back here because the landing gear position has to be right behind the center of mass. Now, there are other quirks. Uh, right now, the engines are not at quite the right thrust. You can see I've, I've deliberately offset that center of mass. Um, having it offset from the center of lift may or may not be a problem, but it can fly. So, But in order to get the center of thrust through the center of mass, which I felt was necessary because um, it seems to yaw persistently otherwise, I had to drop the throttle on here, so its max throttle is only 56%, even though this is already a smaller engine than the one here. The engine size is, uh, in real life, it is a little bit smaller, but only based on the engine, uh, the actual engine size that I made. See the max thrust 3 there, max thrust 3.9 here. It's actually a little bit smaller than necessary, and still we need to throttle down. So there's something wrong about this. So aside from moving the center of mass back, I had to do something else to fix it, and that was to drop the, the FAR module. So basically there's a stock lift module, and then there's a FAR aerodynamic model. The FAR aerodynamic model is messed up uh, for me, at least the way I make the planes. Something about the way I make the planes is messed up because it had the same problem with the XB-70. The problem was it would persistently roll right, even though the XB-70 is symmetrical. So. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that, but the stock aerodynamic model works just fine. <laughs> well, I say that, but when you're trying to break the sound barrier, it's not fine. The drag from the stock aerodynamic model is too severe to break the sound barrier with the XB-70. Not a problem with this plane, though. With this plane, everything is all right. So let's take it outside and see how it goes. Okay, so... The first battle is good. We've uh, got the plane sitting properly on the runway without any issues. Uh, I'll use SAS initially, but I do have uh, atmospheric autopilot that we can use, and I'll show why that might be helpful. And we'll start the engines. We're only at a half fuel load right now. I haven't tested it with a full fuel load. So, I'm using wheel steering at a low speed, but once we get to about 24 meters per second, it's not good to use the wheel steering anymore. And we need to get to about 40 meters per second, and then I can rotate off. But I can't turn yet, because there's not enough uh, speed across the ailerons until we get to about 60 meters per second. So, uh, keep it steady, and then roll is okay. Yeah, there's sort of a minimum maneuvering speed with this. But after that, seems okay. Performance-wise, it seems to operate about the way you'd expect it to. But be careful of the stall, of course. And the, that maneuvering speed thing. And it looks spiffy, of course. Now the model is made with uh, obviously the correct airfoils and correct colliders. The wings really ought to be read as shaped the way they are, as is the body. I'll post the parts in the video description, but I don't have the engines and I don't have the landing gear and I don't have the control surfaces. Those you'll have to get from B9 procedurals. 
Um, so, and Fire Spitter 40 engines, at least for my case, I thought was the best because that's that way you can tweak the engines to make sure I have to actually select the engine. Uh, as these non-RO customizable pro 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 propeller engines. Uh, so yeah, I figured that would be the best thing to use since we I could tweak them as I have. So this is SAS, and you'll notice a little bit of a wiggle here. Uh, let me go into. Uh, it's actually going a little bit faster than it ought to right now. Um, see that roll a uh, yaw wobble? This. Uh, it going no, it's like it's shaking its head. Um, that's one thing auto atmospheric autopilot can fix. Press P to activate that and it stops that. It just, uh, it has a persistent slight yaw that could be fixed with uh, a little bit more of an adjustment between the two engines. But I think I should probably manually move the center of mass fur to the left and hopefully in that case I can up the left engine so that it matches its real life specs. I need to figure out how to up the engine sounds on this, they're a little bit soft. But anyway, I didn't have this plane in any other flight simulator right now. There used to be one for Microsoft Flight Sim, but I think that was Flight Sim 9. Uh, the engines are sort of poking out so that I can actually click on them and the spinner isn't exactly the shape it ought to be obviously it should be a conic spinner instead of these things which are sort of older we're going a little bit fast now to be honest so it probably shouldn't be able to go this fast I think uh, maximum speed for this is 270 knots we're going well above 300 but that's partly because I didn't even know how big to make the engines. You know, the, the thrust number is like 3 uh, reported in the VAB, 3 and 3.8. Well, I don't know what units that's in, but it sure isn't horsepower. So, this is the first time I'll be trying to land it, incidentally, so it may go wrong. Trying to kill some speed here. Oh, it's very difficult to roll right now. So that's that's a curious fact. Okay, we'll need to see. I'm I'm at full roll here, and it does not want to roll. So I'm actually turning with the rudder right now. <laughs> oh, oh, but 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 that you can stall that way. You can stall that way. Look, it is weird. Oh, looking at where the prograde vector is compared to where I am. Uh, I'm maxed out on yaw, trying to get back to the prograde vector. I don't think I can. I think I've stalled out in the weirdest way possible. Well, I'm gonna hit the water soon. Well. Oh, okay, it recovered. Jeez. Weird plane sometimes. May extend the landing gear helped, I don't know. Oh, we're coming in really fast. Good thing it's a long runway.
Okay. Oh, oh no, it's a, oh no, it always does this sort of thing. I mean, a lot of planes that I try and land end up skidding off to one direction or another in Kerbal Space Program. Um, there you are, the Rutan Boomerang. One of the more unique designs, maybe the most unique design uh, for an airplane I've seen. Eh, it's a tough call. Anyway, so there you have it. Parts will be in the video description. Uh, if you want to use it in stock, I haven't tested it in stock, so watch out. Um, also, delete the RO configuration file if you do. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.